In this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of how um, you can do um, shader development in Project Island. Project Island is written for rapid prototyping and tweaking, and that means that anything that you write in code should be hot reloadable, and that also extends to shaders. And um, when I say shaders, I'm not just talking about fragment shaders, I'm also meaning um, vertex shaders, uh, geometry shaders, um, tessellation shaders, and even the more exotic ones like um, the ones that you can only get with modern APIs like Vulkan, like uh, RTX uh, ray tracing shaders and NVIDIA mesh shaders, they're all available um, in a hot reloading environment within Project Island. To keep things simple and to keep this video relatively short, I'm going to focus on um, fragment shaders for now. Um, I'm going to do this by uh, setting up an app that has a full screen quad and uh, for this I'm going to use the project generator. In the very first video I did, I um, described how to use the project generator, so I'm not going to repeat myself too much here, but um, I would invite you to take a look at it um, if you're interested. Um, the one difference from uh, the first video is that this time we're going to use a specific uh, template and um, we're going to specify it at the end of our command line here, creating a new app inside of our apps demo uh, folder. We're going to call this app um, shader, which is what's specified with the A parameter, and then uh, dash T for the template name, and the template's called quad template. This will use the quad template to create the boilerplate for an app that uh, renders a full screen quad, um, which is um, drawn using a fragment shader and obviously a vertex shader as well. Okay, let's take a look at what we got. Um, and um, we're going to open what we just created using Qt Creator. Um, and um, let's take a look. Let's open the CMake file um, that was just created um, as a project file. Um, we will configure it using Clang. You could just as well use GCC, but I prefer Clang. Um, and let's take a look at what we got here. So it hasn't, uh, hasn't uh, opened it completely, so we need to run CMake once more. Once we've done that, uh, we can see that in here, uh, this is our app, and in here, this is um, Project Island, which supports our app. The most important file in our um, uh, app directory is the one that's uh, called shader uh, underscore app.cpp, which is the um, file that contains the code that actually uh, renders to screen. And the function that does the rendering is called um, pass main exec, um, which is uh, the callback that gets called um, by um, the render pass once the render pass draws. And what that um, callback does, um, what that function does, is that it uh, binds a graphics pipeline. And um, the pipeline um, is created a little bit earlier inside this uh, function. The pipeline is called um, full screen quad, and it's built based on two shader stages. One is the um, vertex shader stage and the other one is the fragment shader stage. The um, shader stages themselves, again, are built um, based on source files and the source files are named here. So the source file for the vertex shader stage is called fullscreen.vert and the um, source file for the fragment shader stage is called fullscreen.frag. Um, we can find these files by looking into the directory of um, our app. So let's take a look. Uh, our app lives in Island Apps, Demos, Shader, um, and then our um, directory where the shaders live is in Resources, Shaders, and, um, and that's um, full screen vert and full screen frag. So these two files. Um, I think we, um, we best open them using a text file just to see what's in there. So um, let's take a look. And that's, um, that's uh, the fragment shader. And um, uh, I think the best way to, to see what's actually happening is to run the app. Um, but I don't want to uh, have the app cover the whole screen, so let me just really, really quickly change the parameters. So what I've changed here is the parameter for the width and the height of the default window. So once the app starts up, um, it will have 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Um, let's see if that's correct. Let's compile um, everything. This will run CMake first and then compile the whole um, project. So Project Island plus the app. Um, and that's just, that's just finished. And um, let's just see what happens if we run the whole thing. Okay, so this is our app. Um, 
it's 200 by 200 pixels wide, as you specified, and um, it does uh, seem to have some mouse interaction, and it's also got um, animation happening. And um, we can we can see where this comes from uh, if you look at the shader parameters. So there's obviously um, there must be some mouse um, uh, position that's fed to the shader, and also a, a time that's fed to the shader. The resolution here is the the size of the of the canvas. Um, Okay, so let's see how, how we can change this this um, this shader. Um, if we, I mean, the, the simplest way to change a shader and, and see if something happens is to just make it red, right? That's that's like a, a, a sticks and, and stones any kind of shader debugging, um, and, uh, and 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 always kind of works. So let's just see what happens if we if we just say we want this thing to be uh, red. Um, and it is red, right? Uh, um, the only thing we get is a uh, an invalid argument name params, which is which is mm, which happens because uh, actually this um, this struct here, these these uniforms are not used at all because um, because they're optimized away. So um, Island will complain, but it won't crash. Like it will it will just um, not use uh, the params. Um, okay, let's just let's just undo this. Um, and let me show you something else that you can do um, in this environment. A nice thing in Ireland is that um, it, it, it does extend um, uh, that the way you can work with shaders uh, slightly because it uses, under the hood, it uses uh, Shader C, which is a, um, um, a shader compilation library that uh, Google built on top of uh, GL Slang. Um, and that also allows uh, to use includes, uh, which is something really nice. So let's say we, we wanted to have um, a file that has some helper functions, like for example, a helper function to draw a circle. Um, and we wanted to have this file um, named uh, circle.glsl. And um, at the moment it doesn't exist in the shaders um, directory, so we need to create it first. So let's um, create this file and um, as in any good cooking show, I've already prepared it, um, so um, we don't have to, you don't have to watch me uh, type all that. But um, basically, what this um, what this file does um, is it is it provides us a uh, a method that um, actually draws um, a, a circle. Um, let's just save this um, as um, circle dot glsl in the same folder as the folder where our shaders live. And that would allow us, I think, to include it um, as an include. Um, so include, and then shade, uh, sorry, circle.glsl. Uh, and we save it, and uh, if you look closely at our log file, we see that um, the uh, circle.glsl has been included, has been loaded. Um, and the pipeline has been regenerated, but there hasn't been a much uh, much impact on, on what we see on the screen because we've actually haven't used anything from from this file, right? Um, so let's use let's use that um, that method that this file gives us, the method uh, circle, to draw a circle. Um, so what we can do is um, instead of using um, the the mouse to draw the circle, let's just draw it programmatically. Um, and and just put it somewhere on screen, right? So um, we say highlight. We override this variable in effect uh, equals uh, circle, and then let's just check the parameters for circle. So it wants the center of the circle, the radius of the circle, and then pos. That's probably the position of the current um, fragment um, uh, or the text coordinate of the of the current uh, fragment. So that's st would be the last um, parameter because that's, um, that's based on the texture coordinate. And then we want the center of the circle, that there will be a deck 2. Um, let's put it at the center, so that there will be 0, 5, um, 0, 5. And then the radius, I think, um, is between 0 and 1, so let's, let's give it a 0 0.2 um, value, so, that's, it's, so that it's um, not too small, but also not too, um, not too big. Um, OK, what have we done? Um, it d didn't like it. Um, uh, we forgot um, uh, something, probably a semicolon. So yes, uh, so let's do that. And that seems to have worked. But uh, we still can't see a circle. But um, that's I think that's kind of obvious because um, because it hasn't uh, been added to the, the final color that's uh, rendered on screen. So let's do that. Um, 
think we can do that. Yes, we can. So now we've got a circle that's drawn uh, using an included um, method from, from another file. Uh, what happens if, um, if there's an error in an include file? That's kind of quite nasty because then you'd have to kind of track wh where's the error, like in which file is it, right? Um, and um, and, and this, um, there's something quite nice in Ireland. Uh, it will always tell you in which file an error happens. So um, if there is, for example, a, a, a typo or something in circle, um, it will tell us that there's an error. It will also give us a context and it will also use the line numbers of the file in question. And it will also tell us that the error happens in circle.glsl at line seven. So in this line, there's our error. And if you fix it, um, it's, it's gone away. And um, um, if you look closely here, you see that the, um, the pipeline hasn't been regenerated. Um, and that's just because um, the pipeline has been cached and um, Island detected that nothing's really changed since um, since the last um, working version of this um, shader, so it didn't even have to compile the pipeline in the background. It just used one version that it had um, from before. So um, that's um, I think uh, yes. Oh, and there's no, there's another quite nice thing with um, with with shaders that you can do, and it is that you can pass. Um, pass um, defines compilation um, uh, constants to the shader. So let's say um, you have a, a version of this uh, shader that you um, want to try out. Let's say you have two different versions of the, um, of the main function, for example. So let's say we, we, compile, uh, we, we copy this and we, we make it dependent on a, on a compilation, uh, 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 on, a, on a define. So let's say if def, um, use uh, default main, then use this main function. Um, else, use use the other main function, and um, and obviously you have to you have to uh, bracket it with an end if. So uh, so that's that's gone well, and um, I mean at, at the moment we won't see any difference, right? So um, so let's just uh, let's just uh, make sure that. Um, that um, we see a difference, um, and uh, let's have the the default version just um, output a red uh, a red uh, a color um, a full screen red um, uh, quad. So that's that's happening, right? So what what happens though if we um, pass a uh, compile um, uh, constant in, or like a, a, a define in when we compile? The shader. So we would we would do that here. We would we would um, define it here, and um, so uh, we can use this um, this name here. Use default main, and define it here. We can give it a, a value like twelve. We don't have to give it a value. It's already like if you if you name it, it's defined. So that would be enough to trigger it. But um, let's just see what happens. So we save this, and then we have to recompile island uh, the the app. Uh, but by recompiling it, the shader also gets recompiled and it also gets um, this define inserted. Um, so if you look at the output of the log here, you see that uh, the macro define has been um, set. Um, use default main has been set to the value 12. Um, so uh, that's a quite useful way. Um, for example, if you have a, um, one of these, uh, what are they called? Um, I think Uber shaders, right? So if you have one of these shaders that define all sorts of different things um, in, in one file, but you only want specific things activated based on specific uh, compile uh, defines, then uh, you can use that uh, quite effectively uh, to just keep everything in one file. Um, and I think that's, um, that's um, about it. If you... Um, want to um, to dig a bit deeper into how shader um, fragment shader um, effects work i highly recommend to take a look at um, the uh, the book of shaders which is an amazing resource um, by patricio uh, gonzalez vivo and jen low i i hope i pronounced their names correctly um, and it gives you a ton of uh, resources and ideas uh, for how to uh, draw with uh, fragment shaders. Um, there's some really, really cool stuff in there. Um, and um, the, um, 
the shader editor in here is really, really amazing too. So if I think, um, let's take a look. Um, for example, the uh, cellular noise, I think has, a, has an example of Voronoi, which is super cool. Um, so um, in here, if I click on this, um, it opens a shader editor, which is, which is really, really nice. Um, and the nice thing that this shader editor has is, is that it allows you to change parameters on the fly. So this is something I, I can't really do in Island, um, but I can develop my shaders in, in, an, in a shader, that shader editor like this and then port them to Island. And um, I, can, um, I can use this uh, kind of shader editor to, um, to really, really nicely tweak fragment shaders. Um, and then um, I can put it into island where I can add the, um, the geometry shaders or the mesh shaders or the ray tracing shaders or whatever other shaders I want to um, develop and tweak on the fly. Um, so if, if I wanted to, um, to, to uh, use one of these shaders, I think, I think it should be pretty straightforward to, um, to actually port it. Let's see. So I, I copy this main function here up into my... Uh, main function here. So let's say default main. That's defined right now. Let's put it into the other one. Okay. And now let's see. This GL frac code is something I don't have, but what I get is index code dot xy. So let's use that. Oops. Let's just replace it. Okay, and I think index code dot xy has um, already been scaled to um, zero one, so I don't have to divide it by the resolution. So all that, and I think the names um, uh, are the same. So um, the names for um, the mouse um, and for for the resolution, I think. Yes, they're the same. So let's see if that shader works. So let's just save it. Okay, so now it's complaining about something. What does it say? Oh, GL frac color. Oh yes, of course, GL frac color doesn't exist um, because we name it out frac color in, in, our, in our shader context. So let's put it in here. Okay, we see nothing, but that's probably because the, um, the define here is set, right? So let's let's remove that define and um, and um, run, oh, and there you go. So um, here we are. We've just ported the shader um, to a um, island uh, full screen app. That's a really cool shader. All right, I think that's, that's all I can, uh, I can show in this short time. Um, but um, yeah, I think I'm going to do another uh, one of these videos relatively soon, um, where I'm probably going to focus on the 2D drawing abilities that come with Ireland.